DevOps Methodologies DevOps has become a common buzzword in IT circles. This video will help IT professionals get more familiar with and learn the methodologies associated with DevOps. We will examine a number of DevOps practices common in the IT world and highlight those that are most popular as well as give pros and cons to each approach. Infrastructure as Code the first prerequisite of modern DevOps methodology is Infrastructure as Code, IAC. In early IT implementations, the VMware admin would log into vCenter and simply clone a standard template to create a new virtual machine. This manual process was acceptable for the creation of one or two virtual images, but could not scale to a modern implementation that involves managing hundreds of VMs. This led to the development of infrastructure as code or programmable infrastructure and is the way that most companies today provision their infrastructure, whether it be virtual machines or containers. IAC is at the heart of current DevOps implementation and allows for the provisioning, management, and update of infrastructure. Each of the configuration management tools have domain-specific language, for example, Puppet, Chef, and Terraform. Since these tools and their output in effect represent the working states of our infrastructure, it allows us to view and treat our infrastructure as if it's code, for example, in the design and release cycles and maintenance and versioning. IAC features and advantages. So then what are the features and benefits of treating our infrastructure as code? The first advantage is that it makes our infrastructure versionable. For instance, perhaps we need to roll back our infrastructure to a previous state due to a loading issue. Since the infrastructure is maintained in our VCS system, we simply select the relevant release by date or version and deploy that configuration. We can also use the VCS system to see the result of incremental changes to infrastructure over time. This can be a powerful way to diagnose problems. The configuration is testable. Just as we test other software before we deploy it, our infrastructure code may be sandboxed and tested before deployment. It's repeatable. Since the infrastructure is implemented as code, we can efficiently replicate any infrastructure element in an accurate and scalable way. Whether it is one or a thousand elements, they will all be deployed identically. Additionally, this allows for parallel deployment. For instance, if one element of infrastructure takes 15 minutes to deploy, a thousand would take over 250 hours. However, since we have implemented our infrastructure as code, we may take advantage of multiple physical resources, cores, machines, etc., so that our provisioning time will be the same regardless of scale. This is one of the most important features of IAC. Popular IAC Tools Chef. This is one of the most popular tools for infrastructure as code and configuration management. Puppet. The biggest competitor of Chef is Puppet. Puppet was actually in the marketplace earlier than Chef, but these two offerings comprise the largest share of the market. Ansible. This is actually owned by Red Hat. It is a comparatively new product but has gained immense popularity in the last couple of months and is in fact almost as popular as Chef and Puppet and is gaining in market share. SaltStack has many robust features and many companies have standardized on it. Also worth mentioning are PowerShell DSC, CF Engine, Blade Logic, and other various tools. However, the first four are probably the most widely adopted infrastructure and configuration management tools at this time working towards CI CD pipeline. The second principle of current DevOps methodology is to be constantly working towards a CI CD pipeline where CI CD stands for continuous integration, continuous delivery. This principle is central to DevOps. The goal is to achieve a pipeline where development changes move from phase to phase in a seamless manner through a series of triggers and feedback loops. Each phase is continuous with feedback until the trigger conditions are met. Only then, when all contingencies are met, can the next phase be initiated. 
Additionally, each stage is automated, such that, for instance, when a change is entered into the VCS system, this either initiates a feedback condition or automatically triggers a build and test cycle. There are various automation tools available to implement a CI pipeline. The most popular by far is Jenkins, but others like Bamboo, TeamCity, and CircleCI are common as well. Each trigger point can be automated such that we have automated builds, automated testing, automated deployments, automated provisioning, etc. The key point here is to implement a pipeline that is integrated, seamless, and error-free. So then the entire cycle from the developer writing code to deployment is known as the CI-CD pipeline. Three buzzwords for CI-CD that we will hear are continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment. There is a small but significant difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment, which we will want to highlight here. The continuous integration phase is the same for both continuous delivery and continuous deployment. In both models, the developers commit their changes and this initiates a build and test cycle that ultimately triggers the next phase in the pipeline. However, if you look at the top pipeline labeled continuous delivery, the deploy to production box is orange. This is to point out the fact that the continuous delivery model follows the prearranged release cycle of the software. In other words, the changes are pushed out manually when the next software release occurs, for example, annually. With continuous deployment, the changes are pushed out automatically as soon as they trigger the smoke test phase. This continuous deployment model makes changes available immediately throughout the system without respect to the software release cycle. Deployments and Downtime Another key feature of modern DevOps is the ability to deploy without downtime. There are a few different deployment strategies that we can follow to minimize downtime. They are Rolling Updates Blue-Green Deployments Canary deployments. Let's look at each one to see how they compare. Rolling deployments. Rolling deployments divides the server form into groups known as subsets, where each subset will be updated in turn while the other subsets remain active. So, for example, if we had 100 servers, we might make four subsets of 25 servers apiece. Now we can batch update the first subset of 25 while the remaining 75 servers are still actively serving the application to end users. Now we can restart the first subset and continue the process with the next subset and still maintain 75 servers active through the entire deployment. Using loading analysis in tandem with rolling deployments, we may be able to tune the subsets and eliminate downtime completely. The next strategy is blue-green, also known as AB deployments. This methodology requires two identical hardware environments. This means that the servers, hosts, networking components, storage components all have to be identical and configured the same. One environment is actively serving the user base while the second environment is updated. Then, at some point, the passive environment is activated and the user base is served from the updated environment. The third method of deployment is known as canary deployment. This methodology has become extremely popular recently and is used by giants like Amazon and Netflix. With canary development, only a small subset of servers is updated with the changes. If the changes cause no problems, the changes are rolled out further and monitored again. This cycle continues until the entire user base is included. At any time in the process, if problems are identified, the updates can be rolled back. This enables two very powerful strategies. The first is performance and quality testing to a defined subset of users. The second use case is multivariant testing. Here, there may be some uncertainty as to which feature set best serves a user base. The Canary method allows the software producer to test the variant feature sets on defined subsets of the user group to determine acceptability. Once the determination is made, the final version can be deployed to all users. Moving towards microservices on containers. The next key to modern DevOps practice is the move towards microservices. 
In traditional monolithic software development, a single virtual machine would be dedicated to serving an application. However, with the advent of microservices, using an entire virtual machine to deploy a microservice is costly from a resource as well as a performance standpoint. Companies today are using containers for their microservices deployments. Containers have completely changed the way we deploy, manage, and maintain our applications. This is why all major cloud service providers such as AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud have integrated Docker and provide containers as a service. Let's take a look at some of the benefits of containers. Agility. If you use containers in your software deployment, they will become more agile. By that we mean you can use containers to deploy applications. By compartmentalizing, you can accelerate application development, test, and deployment. Package dependencies means you can deploy anywhere. Containers suit the continuous deployment methodology and enable build, ship, and run. Consistency. Consistency is the key to successful releases. In the monolithic deployment methodology, environmental inconsistencies are the main cause of failed deployments. Small differences between the dev and test and deployment environments become major roadblocks to a successful deployment. Containers remove this roadblock by packaging all dependencies. Utility. Containers start and run much more quickly than virtual machines, one second as opposed to one or two minutes or even more for a virtual machine. In particular, for small test cases, containers are ideal. Containers were designed to support the microservices architecture. Breaking the silos. The final principle of DevOps is breaking the silos. When we talk about having an efficient CI-CD pipeline, we are presuming that we have collaboration. This means that developers, testers, operations personnel, anyone who is a business stakeholder in your application should be working together. However, in large projects and large organizations, this is rarely the case. The traditional team structure where teams are siloed by development, operations, networking, storage, etc. will not work efficiently in a modern DevOps environment. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos addresses this with a very simple concept known as the two pizza rule. This rule simply states that no team or meeting should be larger than the number of people that can be fed by two pizzas. This would mean about 10 to 12 people in a single team. Small teams are more productive, more easily managed, and have more ownership of the application. The benefits of the small team are One team is involved end-to-end. -end. This means that one team has the entire responsibility for the application or microservice. This means that one team will manage the microservice through all cycles of the CI-CD pipeline. Development, testing, deployment, maintenance, and support. Because of this, the focus is on problem solving to achieve a business goal. In a siloed approach, the focus is on making sure the problem is not because of the silo. Since the Agile team has end-to-end -end responsibility, the focus is to fix the problem, not fix the blame. Since blame is not the issue, focus is maintained on the issue. This immediately reduces stonewalling and improves productivity. With total responsibility focus, downtime is drastically reduced and the dreaded 3 a.m. call becomes an endangered species. A lower support load means the team can focus on more productive things, like new features. The two pizza rule. Fail forward. Always be ready for feedback. Systems fail. People make mistakes. Somebody once said, if you design a server allowing that it will have outages, then those outages will never occur. In other words, we fail our way to success by incorporating feedback from the failure into our process and fixing the problem. Take personal responsibility. Don't blame anyone. 
Create success from failure by sharing what you learned. Each failure includes lessons for success. Share them. Start immediately. When someone is learning to ride a bike and they fall, their parent puts them back on the bike right away. They soon forget about their failure when they're zooming down the road. Don't do it alone. Know, cultivate, and orchestrate your network. We succeed as a team. These, then, are some of the key principles and practices of the modern DevOps environment. It is by no means an exhaustive list, but they do represent a list of common practices that are being implemented by major organizations across the globe and have been proved useful in real environments. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening. Hey, want to become an expert in cloud computing? Then subscribe to Simply Learn's channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in cloud computing, click here.